is that we need to be the people that we want to be on social media. Um, and, you know, many of us will have picked up our and, and go through our, um, our timeline and go boring, 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 boring. This is the Business Storytelling Show with Christoph Trapp. Name a top 20 storytelling podcast and a top 5% podcast globally. Christoph chats with thought leaders and experts to share tips and tricks that can help you tell your company's stories better to drive business results. Available wherever you listen to podcasts, live streamed on major social media channels, and part of the DB&A television network. Available on most U.S. television sets and streaming on Roku and Amazon Fire. Here's Christoph with today's episode. Let's go. Let's go, business storytellers. How's everyone doing? Hey, thanks for joining me. Episode 550, I think. Uh, I wasn't paying attention at the end of the opening there because I'm sitting here seeing my LaCroix. And the reason I mentioned that is not because it just tastes good. It does. But we're live once again on Amazon and you can buy LaCroix right there on Amazon. It's in the link in the carousel. Check it out. Now, if you're not watching on Amazon, make sure you search for Christoph Tramp Amazon Storefront and you can find all the stuff that you're seeing around me, my microphone, my backdrop, everything. Everything you're seeing, you can order right there, including the other thing that you can find in my Amazon carousel and my storefront is the book we're talking about today, Social Selling Techniques to Influence Buyers and Change Makers. And this is the second edition uh, that's coming out uh, pretty quickly here. Timothy Huge wrote that. And social selling is a very interesting topic to me because, first of all, I know for a fact that it works. And I also know that a lot of people don't give it the time that it needs. Stop looking at your watch, my friend, when you should be looking at your calendars. So let's get Tim Hughes on the show here. Find out about what's new in social selling and how do we make it work moving forward. Tim, welcome to the show. Hi, Christoph. How are you doing? If you are watching on the podcast channels only, we fist bump on this show. So head on over to Spotify. That's where the uh, video version is available. Tim, thank you so much for, for coming on. Congratulations on another uh, launch of the book. Uh, certainly, that's probably a bear to keep updated, right? Because stuff changes all the time. Yeah, it came out. The first edition came out in 2016, and it's been a runaway bestseller. Um, and you can imagine during COVID, et cetera, it, it, it just went ballistic um and kogan page my uh, publisher said we need to do a second edition so that's what we've done so you got right on that and that's coming out right now so the one thing you know when i when i read your book one thing that really stood out to me and i'm a social guy i want to connect socially and, and all those things but i'm also a search guy okay. how do people find my stuff when they want to find me and the the, the section that really hit home to me was People go on TikTok and search for whatever, right? They search for what's content strategy, what's social selling, whatever. Uh, kind of talk about that development. How does that fit into social selling today? Because now there is a, I don't know if we call it search SEO, but but it definitely it's search intent. Yeah, I think that, um, I mean, the, the figures are there's something like 40% of um, people, certainly under the age of 40, use social to search rather than they do with search engines it's a massive problem for google as you can imagine because what we're we're now used to doing all those searches and we're 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 going online and what we're doing is that we're we're we're, we're more clever in the way that we search and what we're doing is that we're going on to social media and saying right i've got a i've got a business project uh, i wonder what's out there i wonder what's doing it. i wonder who could help me um and um you know we're now seeing so um on the 20th of September, um, IDC and SAP came out with some research saying that 67% of buyers are now using social media as a way to research uh, products and services. Because I mean, what we all do is that we search for our, reach for our mobile phones whenever we want to buy anything. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly what I do. Uh, and it, very, very interesting. I mean, it kind of changes my content strategy just a little bit right i mean i should also put my stuff on 
on these social channels to, to be found. But let's kind of move off being found. How else are we socially selling? What I mean, what are the basics that people uh, should think about? And are we only talking about the sales team or who are we talking about? Who should be doing this? Well, uh, generally, we can talk about sales because it's it's kind of easy because we can say, we can increase your revenues by 30% and reduce your sales cycles by 40%, which is, a, you know, that's something that people can actually grab hold of. Um, though what we're seeing is that it's actually far wider than that. So let, let me just explain a little bit about what, what you can do in terms of, of social selling. So, so first and foremost, what is it not? It's not sending spammy messages over social, which is what people think it is. So one of the things that we've that, that sales and marketing has been for the last probably 30, 40 years is around interruption. So a cold call, I interrupt you and I pitch. In email marketing, I interrupt you and I pitch. Advertising is I interrupt you and I pitch. So people think that social is I'm going to interrupt you and I'm going to pitch. And what happens is that you don't get very far. Social media is social media, not spam media. And so there's a different way that you need to work, which is to understand that the modern buyer has changed. Um, social media has changed the world. It's changed society and it's changed the way that we do business. And, you know, we're always looking people up. You know, first thing that people, Tim Hughes, who's that? Well, I'm going to look him up on social or I'm going to search for him. And so what we need to do is that we need to be understanding that and, and then respond to that. So there's three things that you can do. The first thing is you need a buyer centric profile. So the profile needs to be a profile where someone goes, that's interesting. So if we take LinkedIn, for example, there's 850 million people on it. Your profile, in effect, is a shop window to the world. So there's 850 million people walking past it every day. And are they going, well, that person's looking for a job or that person's boring? Or are they going, that looks interesting. I think they could help me. And that's the difference and the transformation that we're seeing. So we have a client, uh, Namos, which is a 100-person Oracle reseller. Um, they had a situation where we, we transform the sales team. They're active on social. And then their buyers are active on social. And they see one of the salespeople and, and actually approach them and say, I think you could help me. This is the project that we've got. Can you do that? And then there's a classic sales conversation goes on. Um, and then what happens is that that, that they, they connect and that turns into a two point six million dollar deal. They then took another um, half a million out of them um, uh, six months later. So you see that this this, this buyer centric profile is about attracting and being the, the profile that your buyer wants. The second thing that you need is a network. And that's about having as wide and as varied network as you can have. You can send about 20, 200 LinkedIn connection requests every week, and you should do. And what the connection request is about, not about your products and services, but the ability to have a conversation. Because everything that we do in B2B requires us to have a conversation. So we know that conversations create sales. So you've got 200 um, opportunities to have set have a conversation and, and, and ultimately create sales. But to be selling in B2B, you need to be connected to the people that are out there in your particular accounts. So if you're running a QBR, so a quarterly business review as a sales leader, you need to be asking your sales team, so how many people are you connected to in that account? And it's not about one or two. I've got a salesperson who, who's got a particular target account. He's connected to a thousand people within the account. He's connected to the whole of the C-suite in the UK and the whole of the C-suite in the US. And because what he's doing is that he's forming those relationships and, and building um, uh, digital bridges to those people. So having a wide network. The third thing that you need is content. You, you know this, Christoph, because you're creating content and we're creating content right now. What we want is content that's going to um, incite, you know, incite me, um, entertain me. This is a great example. Here, here's a podcast. Um, where you're entertaining people, you're giving people information. So this is not about putting out brochures because we've actually done some research and nobody comes to social media to, to look for brochures. They come to social media for conversations. Um, what they're looking for is authentic content. So not something written by a marketing department or a marketing agency, something that you created. You as a salesperson, you understand the business issues that, are, uh, uh, that, that your customers have. Write about them. So putting that all together, for example, we uh, were targeting a, um, a PE company um, and um, 
what we did is that we understood that the business issue that they had was forming and getting and growing in international accounts. So what we did was that we obviously have bar centric profiles. We connected to the people within the account um, and we put out a blog that said, if you're a PE company, this is the sort of thing that you should be doing to grow your um, and, and grow into different accounts within 10 minutes. The CEO of that PE company had rang, rung us up. And then what happened was that we presented to him on the Tuesday. We presented to him on the board on the Friday. And then what happened was that we got a purchase order the week after. So some people out there will say that social selling takes a long time. It's rubbish. If you've got the building blocks and the methodology in place, you will find that um, you will actually build relationships very fast. And that can turn into commercial interaction. So to talk about your the, the other point, if you think about that from a sales perspective, but we then empower the HR team, the customer service team, the, the, the people in purchasing, we're not necessarily sell, selling. What we're doing is saying, I love working for this company because it's got a great um, environmental or social governance policy. Or I love this company because um, because of our um, uh, inclusion and our diversity policy. Uh, 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 policy if we're going out and we're talking and we're sharing the the culture that we have and the the fact that it's a great place what you're going to find is that people that are uh, looking for a job or people that are uh, looking for a change will go do you know that looks like a really interesting place to work for and what we found is that the modern buyer is on social media we also know that the modern job hunter is on social media in fact we know that the modern investor is on social media so what you'll find is that by um, having all, all of these people and empowering your team across the business to talk in this way. So we talk about having um, walking digital corridors and having digital conversations. So in the past, we would have done things where we were um, we would have been able to actually go onto a client site. Now, what we're able to do is to walk into prospects and clients and meet with people and have conversations, but in the digital world. And this is this is this is transformational. Um, and we talk about this, this digital effect that is, is impacting and the conduit to it is through social media. You know, I mean, certainly I believe in social media and I've I've I've, I've gotten deals through social media. In fact, I flew to India because of social media. Right. To speak at a yep. big conference with don't remember his name, but the, 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 the head guy from Iron Maiden was there. He flew his own plane over and Bruce Dickens was flying. Yeah. Uh, who was it? Bruce Dickinson. Yes, I think that's who it was. But, you know, so my, my the point is that wouldn't have happened without social media. So certainly it's working. What's interesting to me is how do you find the balance between being annoying and, you know, connecting with people? So I'll give you an example. I, I'm not in sales. I'm a marketer. I'm a content strategist. But certainly I'm trying to learn as much about the industry as I can. I want to connect with as many people as I can. And I do that all the time. And one thing I do is um, when others in my industry like somebody's post and I'm not connected with them, I will just follow them, right? I just click the follow button, like the post. If I have something to say of value, I might comment. I don't do comments like, oh, that's awesome. That's great. Like I want to have something a little bit more in depth. Uh, and sometimes I don't, right? So I just don't say anything. But if I have an opinion, I might share it uh, without, you know, inciting a riot or something like that. But where's that fine line between being annoying and building those relationships? I mean, you do see some of those posts sometimes where people complain and say, what's with all these cold outreaches, blah, blah, blah. And then somebody should tell them that, hey, your sales team, buddy, is having a lot of success with that same thing you're complaining about. I think that um, I think what we need to do is that we need to be the people that we want to be on social media. Um, and, you know, many of us will have picked up our and, and go through our, um, our timeline and go boring, 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 boring. And then what you do is you take um, one of the brochures uh, within your company and you post it out and then you wonder why you don't get any engagement. Um, and and so what happens is that actually, if you're doing that, is that you train the algorithm and train your customers to ignore you. So you have to be the uh, the encouraging, the the positive um, uh, person, and that's what we would expect. If if we went to our um, a customer's 
uh, office and walked down their corridor and knocked on a few doors and say, hey, Stuart, um, haven't seen you for ages. Can we have a chat? You would be encouraging and you would be positive and you wouldn't go, well, I don't like the picture of you that you've got on the wall with you fly fishing. It looks terrible with those big waders. You look rubbish in them. So so the fact of the matter is, is that we we have to be the encouraging people. Um, and um, I think there's only two percent or two percent of people on, on LinkedIn, for example, share content. So even even though you see um, a lot of content, very few people are sharing it. And what you'll find is it's the people that are being helpful, insightful um, and entertaining that are bubbling to the to, to the surface, like like this pod, podcast. You know, this is where um, people will go, Christoph. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised you got invited to, uh, um, to India for, uh, to, to speak because here's, a, here's an insightful podcast which is helping people. And I think sometimes people worry about sharing their knowledge. I think if you looked at all the blogs that we'd ever ri written, we've probably ri written about every single thing about the methodology that we've created. We just don't believe that anybody is going to piece them together and work it out. So we share the, the, share our IP. You know, that some people say, you know, you should only do, was it share 80 percent of it and then charge for the 20 percent? No, share 100 percent of it, because what we're doing is that we're helping people. Um, and um, one of the things that we found, certainly over the last 24 months, is this inflection point happened in October 2020, when they're, certainly in the UK, when we had the second lockdown, where people said, OK, we're not going back to the way it was. And what we're going to do is that we are constantly going to be online. And what we've done with um, um, what we've done with content is that we've actually been able to train people to be what we call digitally dominant. So so um, as I talked about earlier on, we empower the sales team. We empower the different departments. We empower the C-suite to be online. So, for example, Cyberhawk, which is a drones company, um, their C-suite is, is all online. The CMO, the CIO, the CFO. Uh, the CEO, Chris Fleming, all of them. Chris Fleming has actually contrib contributed to the book. Um, and he talks about running a digital company and a digital organization. They went digital probably about 18 months ago. Um, and he sees himself as running two companies, a drones company and a media company, because he knows that they need to be putting out insightful, interesting content. And they need to be doing it every day. If you don't do it every day, you're you're invisible. And so what we're seeing is people are doing that. And then what they're able to do is actually take the oxygen out of what their competitors are doing, because their competitors are probably posting brochures and doing the same old stuff. Hey, look at me here. I am at a conference and stuff like that, which people aren't really interested in. And this digital dominance is is really coming to the fore right now and people that are making the step right now. And taking the, the plunge and investing in digital are able to completely wipe the floor with the uh, uh the competition what's interesting about the, the content creation piece you mentioned content creation is like a muscle right the more you do yes. it the better you get at it the more you build it up and that's kind of what i've learned i mean i didn't i never thought of myself as a podcaster forget about a live streamer forget about a tv host forget yeah. about an amazon influencer and i'm doing all those things and people are paying attention people are listening and it's kind of fun. I learn a lot. The other thing, you know, when you mentioned earlier that every t I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, but to the extent what I heard you say is um, every topic has basically been covered and it really has. But when Todd Jones was on the on the show and I, I, I challenged him on this, he said, we don't need any more top of the funnel content. And I said, I disagree with you. And here's the reason why, because there is so much unique content companies can create. If they just think about it, I'll give you an example. How to edit a tweet. Everybody and their brother has written about that, right? But hardly anybody wrote about um, how to do it exactly. So I wrote about it, right? And certainly, am I going to win against the New York Times? Maybe not. Um, but I'm trying, right? And I've had other cases where that actually happened. So we have uh, Tibby Begman. Tiba. I, uh, you go ahead. Tell me how to, how to pronounce it. Uh, it's 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 T I think it's Tiba uh, Bergman. She's from the um, from uh, Denmark. From Denmark, yeah. joining us here, and so this comment is actually brought to you by the restream pairing function. So what's happening is 
Tim is restreaming his uh, our live stream to his channels. So she's one of his connections and she's commenting here. We do appreciate you to, uh, chiming in. This is the challenge in my organization, convincing our team leaders and management that it is worth the time invested. Don't overthink. Uh, in a couple minutes, uh, Tim, how do we mm-hmm. convince people to actually get going? Or is it really just like, just go, just do it. And then you it, can it, prove it later. Usually what we would do is actually start with a pilot. So what we do is that we find people in the organization that say that they they feel that they're brave enough, that they're willing to share things about themselves, um, that they're, they're willing to, to invest the time and effort in being uh, digital. Um, and uh, then what we do is that we take them through a process, a methodology where we teach them all the things. So you can be you know, terribly frightened about going on social, but we explain how to have a, a biocentric profile, how to connect to people in a non-spammy way, how to build, a, in effect, a digital territory, um, how to create content. And we take them through this methodology. And um, the methodology has now been um, certified by the um, uh, Institute of Sales Professionals here in the UK, which is a sales trade body. So it's now a qualification that you can get, just like you'd get at school or university. Um, and and really what we do is that we get people to take baby steps. Um, and what we always find is that there will be one or two people that will fly and, and other people, what we can do is we can move them, um, uh, move them along. But it's about giving people the skills. Um, I often liken it to organizations where you train people about health and safety you train people about diversity and inclusion um what you what they people don't do is seem to do is train people about social media um and by tr- putting them through a, um, a, a recognized training and coaching process what happens is that they get the requisite skills you're not going to be placing the organization at risk you're not going to get the the people making the mistakes because they know what to do um and we see this actually now as a business imperative you know the 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 um, the clock's ticking now in terms of getting people to to actually be um, recognised on digital and be on digital. Um, and that org- organisations that we work with generally are, are increasing their revenues, generally by thirty percent, uh, reducing their sales cycles by forty percent. Which is, it, if we're moving into a downturn or um, moving into some sort of recession, that's going to give you um, a downturn or recession proof. Well, and that's certainly something everybody's after, especially right now where, you know, the, the um, inflation is through the roof and, and things are changing, people buckling down, which is a whole different topic, quite frankly. Um, there's so, how, how do you feel about automation in social selling? I mean, I use some automation. I'll give you an example. I guess this is not social selling, but all my emails around this podcast, they're all automated, right? Hey, Tim, don't forget, we're going to meet tomorrow. Um, hey, Tim, send me a copy of your book if if you have a book, right? I mean, you have a book, obviously, but some guests yes. don't. Um, all these different uh, things are automated. On social media, you know, I use Buffer. Um, I use, you, you know, some of those tools. And I know there's others, especially on LinkedIn. You can send people automatic messages based on who they are. Really briefly, how do you feel about automation when it comes to um, social selling? So um, you need to be really careful with uh, with automation. I use Buffer. Um, so that's about scheduling or scheduling um, tweets um, and putting out the, 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 the tweets that you kind of need to. But you need to be very careful on LinkedIn. Uh, so one of my colleagues is actually just uh, he was uh, LinkedIn cut him off, um, shut his account last night um, and he's had a conversation with them. And actually by he, he uses HubSpot. Um, and just by having HubSpot connected to LinkedIn, that's seen as an illegal app um, and they cut him off. And he's had to actually cut that because what HubSpot was doing was scraping um, emails. So you need to if from a LinkedIn perspective, you need to be really, really careful about using any form of automation. Um, if you look at I think it's um, clause 8.1 and 8.2 in their terms and conditions, they talk about um, the fact that they don't want automation and you need to be it. it you, it, what happens, especially on LinkedIn, is you, if you're using automation, it looks on uh, looks unauthentic. You know, I I've written my name deliberately on LinkedIn that says Timothy Timothy open brackets Tim Hughes, and I know when I get a message that says Dear Timothy open brackets Tim, I know that they're using automation. Therefore, I know that they're not authentic. 
Um, and there's been a lot of um, people putting dots and stuff in front of their name. And you just need to, you know, you just need to be really careful about it. I've done that too. I, I used to have a podcast uh, microphone at the beginning of my name. And every time I get an automated message, I would get that. So in the last um, 30 seconds here, tell me, how do people work with you? How do they reach out, reach out to you? And if you can fit it in, what does it mean that you should have played quit ditch for England? I'm lost. Okay. Um, so um, best place to get me is my LinkedIn profile. Um, I'm, I'm Timothy Hughes uh, on uh, LinkedIn, or you can find me, Timothy underscore Hughes, uh, on uh, Twitter. The other thing is the key thing about your LinkedIn profile is your summary title. It's the most visible thing about you on the Internet. And what you need to do is create curiosity. So what happens when someone goes, and my title is should have played Quidditch for England. Someone goes, what on earth is that? And they come over to my LinkedIn profile because I have the professional edition. I can see that someone's been to my profile and I can start a conversation with them. Classic. But, what, but what's a Quidditch? Quidditch. It's the um, it's the game that we, um, it's a made up game that um, okay. is in um, the J.K. Rowley books of Harry Potter. I don't read those. Very interesting. Hey, Tim, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for sharing You're your insights. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Christoph. Great to be here. That's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. Please rate and review our show on your favorite podcast channels. And don't forget to share this episode with your networks. We appreciate you. Until next time, let the best.